Now my viewers, as is obvious, the title of this video is Response of Dr Matthew Collins QC, President of the Victorian Bar Council, to allegations of and evidence of a culture of silence which protects corrupt judges and lawyers. A photograph in the centre of the screen is Matthew Collins. To his right, I have a logo of the Victorian Bar Council. Now, in order that you can see who I am, I have placed a photograph of myself in the bottom left of the screen. My name is Glenn Alexander Thompson. My website is courtsontrial.com. Now, Matt Collins is a very sophisticated gentleman. He is the author of two internationally recognised texts on defamation. The covers of each are displayed on the screen now. And as you can see, one is entitled The Law of Defamation and the Internet, and the other is entitled Collins on Defamation. So, as you can see, he is certainly well armed when it comes to protecting the good name of himself and anyone who engages him for such purpose. Now, the reason for this video is that Matt Collins has not met my expectations as to his conduct as President of the Victorian Bar Council. I will particularise that conduct and I leave it to you, my viewers, to form your own conclusions. Prior to publishing this video, I submitted it to Mr Collins for review and I invited comment and in particular if I had omitted or misrepresented any relevant particular. Now, the relevant particulars are, firstly, on the 11th of January 2019, I published a YouTube video which particularises and alleges cultural corruption and judicial corruption and the corrupt conduct of barristers and solicitors in Victorian courts. The title of that video is Judicial and Cultural Corruption, Supreme Court of Victoria. A copy of that video is running without sound at the lower right of the screen. However, however, Notwithstanding that it is without sound, you can see that it deals with exceedingly serious allegations. The second part, particular, is that by email on the morning of 12th of February 2019, I referred that video to Matt Collins. My email said that I would be pleased to learn how Matt Collins and his members intend to ensure that the types and classes of corrupt conduct evinced in that video is detected and dealt with in the future. Matt Collins replied and supplied two, two internet links, one for making complaints against judges and the other against lawyers. The text of my reply email is on the screen now. Now, as you can see, it says, your reply is substantially as I expected. On the face of it, you have chosen to avert your eyes. As you are well aware, my email and attached video to you did not constitute or include a complaint about either judges or legal practitioners. It addresses and exposes a culture of ignoring and concealing corrupt conduct and that that culture infects the entire bar and bench and gives rise to the circumstances where corrupt barristers are assured of protection and bring fabricated claims and defences with impunity. Your reply is consistent with that culture. I again provide you, as President, with an opportunity to respond. If you choose to continue to ignore and avert your eyes, then I will conclude, conclude that you personally are part of and party to the culture which engenders corruption. 
Now, in my view, the critical part of my, my reply is the part now outlined in red. That part particularly sets out that my video addresses a culture of ignoring and concealing corrupt conduct and that such ignore gives rise to the circumstances where corrupt barristers are assured of protection and bring fabricated claims and defences with impunity. I also said that McCollins' reply to me was consistent with that culture. Now, Matt Collins' reply to me is on the screen now. And as you can see, he said that he di disagreed with the contents of my email and my attacks on the bar and bench are profoundly offensive and misguided. And he also said the, pro the proposition in my last paragraph is deeply offensive and wrong and that he would not engage in further correspondence with me. Now, manifestly the question as to whether or not my so-called attacks on the bar of the bench are profoundly offensive and misguided are entirely dependent upon the material set out in the video which I referred to Matt Collins. Now, I can't say whether Matt Collins viewed my video before replying, but I think the probability is that he did not. Now, the YouTube link to that video will be on the screen for the final 25 seconds of this video. I invite you to have a look at that video and make your own conclusions as to whether or not Matt Collins, as President of the Bar Council, ought to have concerned himself with the corrupt culture and conduct abundantly evinced in that video. Thank you for watching. Please click the link and conclude for yourself.